guys. This is uh, Jeff Kruth from the farmhouse here in uh, Forestville. Jeff's sitting down today to uh, kind of just chat about Pinot Noir and uh, our Pinot Noir and kind of the State of the Union, so to speak. Um, but uh, you and I had talked before about, um, in particular, our Pinot Noir, um, kind of the style change that I implemented starting in 2006. You've had the, the wines before then, and um, just, I guess, interested to kind of get on some of your take and then um, you know, taste a couple of wines, um, kind of, I guess, go over some of the, I mean, you and I have talked in bits and pieces about the Pinot change, but we have been you know, sitting down and having a, a full-length conversation about, uh, you know, what prompted it, et, et cetera. It, um, I think some of the people that uh, <clears throat> buy our wines be interested in getting, again, your opinion about the direction of the wines um, since you're on the floor selling them. And uh, I'm on the other side of making them. So um, anyways. Yeah, I, I came here with maybe a year and a half ago when you released uh, these wines. And I was initially uh, really kind of interested in your Syrahs. And uh, that tasting, when we tasted these 06s, was uh, really kind of made me stand up and notice the Pinots. And I, I really like the, the style change. And it's one of the things I'm looking for in the restaurant is how do you find California Pinot that really has an expression of fruit, uh, but is uh, a little bit more restrained in nature, tends to show more depth, more minerality, a little leaner that can complement food dishes. And you know, we do a lot of wines in California that are rich and ripe and sweet and oaky and luscious. And um, I think this is an area where I'm always looking for that are uh, a little bit more detailed uh, styles of wine and I think are, are great in a, in a food environment. So right. I, I really like this vintage and uh, you know, I think that um, you know, the wines are more transparent, uh, you know, the, you know, less oak and uh, less just kind of overt ripeness. And, uh, but, but there's still this kind of precision of fruit that I really like. So. Um, it's been one of my favorite uh, Pinots. I, I, I like the change, that, the, the direction that you made. Yeah, I mean, it seems to be resonating with somebody like yourself, certainly from a restaurant side, and finding yeah. them more food-friendly. I, mean, I, I found with my older wines in general, they just um, they weren't kind of holding up. Yeah. I mean, they, they um, everyone uses kind of, I guess not everyone, but certain people, the winemakers use Burgundy as their example of um, their benchmark. Yeah. Um, certainly has been for me, and you can have those wines be 10, 15, or older, 20 years older, and they they've still have an energy, a nerve yeah. about them that still makes them food friendly. And I was going back and tasting some of my older wines, and it just didn't seem to be, I don't know, they seemed like fading a little bit. Um, they didn't didn't have the energy I think they want they needed, and and certainly um, for me, it didn't feel like they were again for people like you to have on the floor. They could go with their food, yeah. you know, have that great acidity and kind of to be able to cut through the fat of the cuisine that we, most people end up eating, you know, it tends to have fat in it. So um, that was just kind of my um, take on it. I mean, I really, uh, you know, I feel like I didn't not meant to be bagging or older wines. I just, it was something that was, uh, I think it's anybody's evolution going through winemaking. Um, you think you're hitting the right style. I had never really worked with Pinot Noir. Um, before working at Turley and over at uh, and then over at Martinelli, we started to, but you know that kind of fuller body style was something that I didn't think I ever really wanted to do. Um, so I thought I was picking at the right times, you know, yeah. picking handling the wines the right way, punching down and trying to from a, a processing standpoint. Um, but it just seemed like subsequently, like going back and you know, ever since I've been back from France, going back and you know, going you know over almost every other year, so to speak. Uh, to Burgundy, tasting a lot of the wines. Um, I don't know, something just kind of switched one year. I was like, God, this is how these wines maintain this balance. And you mentioned this transparency, this kind of laziness, but still have this, this concentration of flavor um, that just seemed like I was missing. Yeah. So all that kind of together with some of the older wines not holding up, kind of just like, I don't know, something kind of went on. I needed to do something, you know. Yeah. I think this style of wine is, it's, it's not the style of wine that you take the first sip and it just hits you. It's, they're, they're, they're not the, the beauty pageant kind of wines that are going to impress you in the first two seconds. But I really like that. I'm looking for wines that kind of will you know, unveil themselves with, with some time. I think these wines will, will, in this style, will age better. And I found a lot of the wines that are, you know, really push the ripeness. Uh, while they can be delicious at first, I think they sort of degrade and, and those flavors just kind of 
get a little bit of pruny uh, as they sit in the bottle. And uh, when you have a little bit of leaner character and a bit more astringency, it protects the wines. Um, and and I, it gives them, I think, more of a kind of arc of evolution right. uh, over time. And, and I like that. And not every, I don't sell these wines to everybody. I don't, um, it's not a wine I would stand up and say, you know, everybody's going to love this. But uh, I think there are a class of people that really do love it. And so, you know, my job as a sommelier is to figure out what somebody's going to like. And I still have the riper, <coughs> plusher wines that I sell to some people. Right. And I have wines like this. But I know um, there's more and more people looking for this as our wine culture um, it evolves more and, and people are tasting wines from all over the world. Uh, I, I find more interest in these styles. of the, It's a little bit more kind of an adult taste right. uh, and, and I find more direction. It's, it's not like this is going to be the whole wine market for sure. Right. Uh, but I think that there's enough people that are interested in these wines and um, you know I think, I think people who are uh, Long time, you know, wine drinkers who who you know drink wine seriously, but don't just want to drink Burgundy or just European wines, but see you know kind of where things are going in California. I think this gives uh, people who have that sort of a taste profile, uh, you know, an opportunity to explore kind of the you know the vineyards and and the capabilities in California, right. uh, but within that sort of frame, uh, not necessarily the the kind of voluptuous you know in your face ripe rich you know, jammy fruit character. And, uh, you know, I'm not, it's, it's not a criticism. It's a different style. Right. But, you know, I think a lot of California has lacked this style. And now I, I, you're starting to see producers like yourself and others that are starting to, I think, kind of, um, you know, gain a foothold in, in, in this style, which it's, it, it's, it is California wine, but it's just sort of a, a, a more subtle expression of, of California wine. Right. I mean, you mentioned something earlier about uh, being pruny, and that was kind of one of the things that I was getting from the older wines is, is they pruny kind of compoted kind of yeah. not necessarily a bad way that it was just kind of um, kind of sappy in and not a good way yeah. and um, it seemed like some of the alcohol was starting to to come out I mean to be honest I mean when I started um, we started in 99 um, you know there were there were occasions along the path that I would um, I was picking at 24 and a half um, sometimes as close to 25. Um, we get a heat spike in September or something like that. Uh, you know, as we're sitting there, I got 22 and a half, and um, you know, ended up picking wine at 26 bricks because I couldn't get the fruit off the vine. Um, and at that point, for me, it was obligated to on certain wines. It wasn't happening with every vintage or every wine that I was adding acid to kind of get the wine back in some type of what I thought was balance, and then sometimes adding water. You know, amelioration. I mean, it's legal now for your um, to have a safe ferment, but I think I got those wines back to some kind of balance early, but I think I couldn't inherently hide the that right over ripeness that was there as it started to come out over time. And um, you know, the, the stuff that I'm making now, whether or not it's going to make old bones, I mean, who's to say? I mean, um, but I just find that the again the the nerve and kind of energy of the wines kind of make them uh, certainly more food friendly. Yeah. Um, I think when when you push the ripeness on things, and you're going to get some of those luscious flavors, but then you have to do so much manipulation in the winery to get it back to you know sort of stable wine, uh, and and to kind of a balanced product. But but you know I think we've talked about this before. With you know you wait two or three years, all that's going to come out in the wash, and you're going to see kind of uh, all those things become clear, and and I think can be faults in the wine over time. And, uh, you know, most wine people are drinking right away. And so in one sense, it's like, oh, well, you know, who cares? Um, make a wine that's going to taste delicious right out of the bottle. Um, but I think that um, this is an approach that lends itself towards, you know, wines that might take a little bit of time to, to evolve, but then they really do have that capability of, of evolving. And, and I think the more you manipulate the wine in the winery, um, you know, the less that uh, that, that is, you, you can't hide that in the end. Right. Yeah.